Excuse me. All right. We welcome everyone to this special meeting on what day is the day? The June 27th, 2022, uh, the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular board meeting, or actually a special board meeting, and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, is not a meeting of the public. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values. We appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. So, Ms. Harrison, we have audience for guests. Is that correct? Okay. Let's start with her. Ms. Arthur. All right, Ms. D. Miller. Good so, Ms. Ms. Miller, I, I do have to read this by law, so um, just one second, okay? I know I can't say <laughs> well, I know, you know, I know, but the CISD Board of Trustees encourages comments about the district from citizens of the district, from district employees, or from members, other members of the public. Anyone wishing to speak may do so at this time. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to public education and be no longer than three minutes per person. The board also respectfully requests the speaker refrain from mentioning other students or parent and staff member names when addressing their concerns. Under the Texas Open Meetings Act, the board is not permitted to discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on the agenda for tonight's meeting. This means that the board members are unable to deliberate as questions provide you with a response or take any action relating to your comments. If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board's deliberation of the issue will be deferred until the appropriate time during the meeting. In addition, the board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought by employees, students, or parents may be brought into accordance with our local school board policy. Each of these processes provides that if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as properly posted agenda item. Copies of our district policy on public participation in meetings and filing complaints can be found on our website. If you need assistance with these policies or processes, please call Merrill Harrison in the superintendent's office. Okay, I'm going to ask um, Ms. Blackard to keep up with the three minutes, and when you and when you start, okay. she'll start. Okay. Good evening. My name is Daniqua Miller. Um, I just had two concerns, really three concerns, and it was on about what happened last um, week of the school board meeting. It was the no uh, about the cell phone policy. Sometimes uh, I feel like, like um, some cell phones are need to be used because my son, again, he's high functioning, but sometimes his inclusion aide might get sick and she can't read a question to him. He uses his cell phone, it's an app that he has that uh, he just scans the sentence and it reads it back to him. And some kids, I, you know, I done gave their parent the app, what the app call. And sometimes we do have a teacher shortage that um, he have to go to turning points and he have to use. It's on. It's on. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes he have to go to turning points. Like last year, he had to do turning points for six months because of the teacher shortage and he needed help reading uh, the sentence. So I feel like the cell phone is that it do need to be used in certain circumstances. Some people do misabuse cell phones and I'm sorry that that do happen, but it's other students that really do need to use their cell phone. And then my second point is the belt. My uh, little niece, she's kind of obese. We had to put two belts together last year to make her a belt. We even tried to find a belt in a men's size and that's embarrassing 
to her. She was bullied for the two belts that she had to use. So I do feel like we do, we need to get rid of the belts and tuck it in the shirts because that, that really do harm us women. Because women, we might look strong, but in the inside, it really do hurt us, our self-esteem. And my last point, nothing but least, the uh, hoodies, I don't care about the hoodies. My kids are gonna go to school regardless with the hoodies, without the hoodies to me. I feel like we don't we don't need hoodies because we don't know who somebody can be. We might think this is a high school student or a middle school student or an elementary student because they starting vaping now at fifth and sixth grade and we don't know. So I know last year that Okay, I know last year that my son kept coming home every day talking about people uh, vaping at his school and he was just in the sixth grade. So I do agree with y'all with the no hoodies. Thank y'all for hearing me out. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Do appreciate it. Okay. Madam Secretary, will you read off what we discussed at our last board meeting? Yes. Um, so, the modifications that we had considered at um, last week's meeting, number one would be eliminate all hoodies, which is under the um, headline of outerwear on our current standardized dress update the um the last line said outerwear with hoods are acceptable but hoods should not be worn on the heads of students inside buildings we would eliminate completely and and add a line that said no hoodies obviously crew neck v-neck zip up three quarters anything else we can think of word wise is fine to wear as long as it does not have a hood um, the second modification was under the top section we said that um, collared shirts would not be required and that spirit shirts would um, be okay on a daily basis so we could um, under that section you know I would say that after we've talked about this a while we allow our communications department to to write this specifically in the wording that we need in documentation for student code of conduct and the standardized dress but um, but that number two was to allow spirit shirts daily and eliminate the need for a collar sh shirt, have either or. Um, the number three modification was uh, shirts do not have to be tucked in. I found that under, I think that's under um, tucked in as well on the second the second side of that it says seventh through twelfth grade shirts must be tucked in at all times so that belt shows and, and must remain tucked in to cover the stomach and back when arms are raised and seated so we would remove the tucked in a uh, clause number four would eliminate the belts which is in its own section so we could eliminate that entire section and then number five was to eliminate the sock section. We didn't care, you know, what color socks they wore or anything like that. So those were the five main takeaways of the modifications that we wanted to make on the current CISD standardized dress. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate you reading that off to us. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to discuss this. And the very first person I would like to call up here is a uh, Chief Stevens, and um, what's your insight on hoodies in our schools? Well, I can tell you when it comes to the safety and security piece, uh, these kids have learned to wear their hoodies to disguise themselves. Uh, it's uh, not a surprise there's cameras everywhere. They know that, and they know if they pull that hoodie tight, some put mask on with that hoodie, and then it really becomes difficult to identify. We had an incident, I believe it was February the 10th. We had two that same month uh, involving weapons on the campus. Uh, and the first incident, the young man had a hoodie on and it, it took several, uh, that one wasn't quite an hour or hour and a half or even longer than that. It was probably 30 to 45 minutes to figure out who he was, switching camera angles, uh, trying to catch that front face view. To definitely identify who it was uh, luckily that one left campus prior to us finding him uh, now the second one it, it took well over an hour and a half probably close to two hours that's the one incident where we went into actual lockdown and the weapon was found on campus 
uh, in possession of a student. So, uh, and, and that one took forever to track uh, because you've got so many hoodies that look alike and uh, it's just, it's almost impossible to identify one person uh, when you've got, you know, 1,800 kids out there and more than half of them are wearing hoodies and <clears throat> half of those are all close to the same color. Uh, so that, that's the actual experiences we've seen this school year uh, within just the few past few months involving hoodies and students that are in behavior that's not appropriate and involving weapons, which is very serious. That thing, that, in my opinion, that's the, that's the whole reason mm -hmm. for this. It's safety for our, and you're the chief police officer for our campus, and you're, if you're telling me that, Yes, it happened. It's, you're, you're, it's a very compelling argument, in my opinion. Um, does anybody else have anything on that? All right. Thank you, Officer Stevens. Um, we have several administrators. If y'all have anything y'all want to add, um, Mr. Thomas and Mr. Melpa, Ms. Mathis, Mr. Kays. I mean, kind of the same stuff as we talked about last week and then what he's talked about here. on the uh, being able to identify kids just what uh, officer Stevens talking about but on a smaller level if a kid you know is being disrespectful to a teacher and that teacher doesn't know that student they don't have them in class they don't know their name they can come and report that and we can go we want to handle those situations obviously but if we can't identify that student from the incident because the teacher doesn't know them or the camera um, you know that goes unaddressed which is a huge issue much much more minor than you know the big picture safety but as far as just school culture and discipline getting handled there's some stuff that goes unhandled because we're not able to identify who that student is <clears throat> I see we have several teachers do y'all have anything to add Hello, my name is Megan Vadassi, and I'm proud to say that this year will be my 25th year at Corsicana High School. I'm here tonight with several of my colleagues to voice our support for changing the dress code to pro prohibit all hooded jackets and hooded sweatshirts. I considered using my time to provide details about experiences with students who used the fact that I did not know them to their advantage. But the fact that we are having this meeting tells me that our campus administrators have alerted you to this issue and provided you with probably many more examples than I could as to why this needs to be changed. Instead, I'm really speaking more to our community and specifically our high school parents. Most of our nearly 1,700 students are great kids. But I will be blunt, not all our kids are great. It's not something we like to focus on, but we have had students on our campus that wore ankle monitors. We have students that are drug dealers and drug users. We have students that are on juvenile probation for various crimes, assault, robbery, drugs. We have had non-students sneak on our campus and blend in. We must be able to identify anyone on our campus at all times and in all circumstances. Students should never feel like they can get away with something because they can hide their identity in a hoodie. As a parent, I would want to know that a student committing a crime on my child's campus would easily be identifiable. Better yet, as a parent, I would want a school that had policies in place to deter someone taking part in a crime. I've heard the argument, just make them keep their hoods off, just discipline the ones that don't comply. We have tried that, it does not work. In a school our size, it is not enforceable. In the time I have, I can't explain to you all the reasons why it does not work. I can tell you, however, that despite our best efforts, it's a constant battle for teachers and our administrators. Administrators and officers that we need to focus on other areas of security. We need our officers to be able to clearly see a student's entire head on a security camera. 
We're asking the community, specifically our parents, to please trust us and support us when we tell you that this one change will make a huge difference in our school being a safer place for all of our children. Thank you very much. Um, if anybody from the public would like to speak, Good evening. I am all supporting of this change. It's very necessary. However, we have to make sure that we are consistent across the board. All schools, all administrators must have the backing by you, Dr. Frost, to enforce these policies. If it's not consistent, it's not going to work. I'm going to use my own son as an example who graduated 2014. Some days it was enforced, some days it wasn't. Sometimes they picked on this kid, sometimes they didn't. The kids think it's a joke if it's not enforced on a daily practice. But we also have to allow the administrators to enforce it. Be consistent, let the administrators be consistent and enforce it daily. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Vicki Price. I've uh, been in the school district for two years with my child. She is currently going into junior high school next year. And our concern is how are you going to enforce this new policy? We think it's a wonderful policy. Um, but the students are going to ask, well, why do I have to do it? And they're going to try to get away with stuffing the hood inside of their hoodie in the back. Uh, are you going to be recruiting parents and other supportive figures in the community to monitor these students as they come in the doors? or may I ask what your plan of attack is to enforce this? Thank you. I'd like to say that uh, you last two kind of stole my thunder because I already had some stuff written down. Um, I was going to suggest um, to, this, to this board, um, I'm a big believer in consequences for what we choose not to do and that, and that would be my own child if he didn't follow the rules as well. Um, I was hopeful that we could, as a board, um, work with maybe in the security committee to create a standard protocol that would be for all administrators in our district that would be consistent across the board um, and the repercussions would be there as well. And, and I think that we have to empower but also require our administrators to support our teachers and follow through with discipline um, at all levels, especially this. So um, in my mind, I can't answer you, Ms. Price, because I am not an administrator, but if I was standing at the front door and I saw a hood inside of a sweatshirt, I'd take the sweatshirt away and say they could get it back at the end of school or they could go put it in their car. To me, there's no more excuses. I think that we have to go back to basics. Enough is enough. I'm tired of using COVID as an excuse, even though it is why we are here. Um, you know, I think we've all struggled and we've been in this bubble, but we have to get out of it. And if we can't behave, we can't expect anything to happen. And in my opinion, I, we have to back our teachers. We absolutely have to back our teachers. And that means administrators backing our teachers as well. So I think we need to empower the administrators to create some type of protocol that they think is feasible and workable, that they will support the teachers and support any kid that comes down that they send for any type of discipline or wearing a hoodie, and then them be required to act that out. I don't think that, in my opinion, I can't pretend to write that protocol because I do not know. They need to write their protocol and then it be a standard over the board is what I would suggest that our committee do. And can I say this? You know, we used to have the term zero tolerance. And we just have to have that mindset. You know, I'm, I'm part of, you know, uh, Officer Stevens' you know, world as far as law enforcement side because I've been you know, around them for a long time. 
and I believe in you know following rules, laws, and all that, and we just don't have an excuse. If we really, there's no excuse. I mean, it's sad that we're at a point where we're arguing over hoodie, and I'm looking at safety and security. That's me. That's my mindset. And so at some point, we got to say, you know what? No more. Zero tolerance. And so, like you said, I'm going to give, I'm like Leah, the power's going to be on the administrators. As soon as that day one, that door opens on day one, when schools opens, set the tone. No. Because these are our young people. I mean, I'm like, do they have, I mean, really? We're the adults. So they got to follow somebody's rules. Because in my world, you have to follow rules. So we just got to, so administrators, we giving y'all the power. You know, when y'all write the rules, no more. Follow the rules. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. Follow the rules. I'm done. If I may just interject, um, of course, I, I agree wholeheartedly that, yes, accountability is key. Um, but community parents, please, please take in consideration of what these teachers the administrators and everyone else have to deal with when it comes to your children. We can lighten the load if we would just really crack down a little bit at home. Um, so I, I say this, presence, presence. Remember this word, presence. The thing is, is that we've treated um, our districts, our schools like daycares. We drop our children off and we just leave and don't care nothing else about them until later on that afternoon. Not knowing that our, our administrators and our teachers, they're the ones spending most time with our children. But if we make it easier for them by teaching them the ways to go, the right things to do, and then being a presence, meaning showing up sometimes. I remember when my mom used to just show up at the school and, and, and possibly sit in the back of the class while I'm up there just acting up and doing what I'm doing in the front and not knowing why everything and everybody around me is just so still and quiet. And the teacher just has this beautiful smirk on her face. Because she know that it's just a matter of moments that all that about is about to change for me. And when I feel the heat come over my body, and I realize, wait a minute, something is not right. And I look back and I see that my mother is there. Sweat. All these different emotions start happening, right? But men, women, parents, if we would just show up at these schools, show the teachers and, and the administration that we are really concerned parents for our children. That's the key. We're, we got to act like we're concerned about our children, man. And we got to be there. So pop in and do the visits. Schools is wide open, correct? You're able to come up and, and, and meet with the children. You're able to come up and, and talk with the parent. Find out what's going on with your child. But I've, I've, I've said this early on Facebook. I think the problem is a lot of our parents is going to be afraid of who, who our children really are when they're not around. So I urge the parents, the community, we've already talked about the administrators and the teachers, but parents, please, please, please become a presence for our children and let them know that you'll support them through the good and the bad as well, but you'll be there. All right? Wait a minute. I didn't get a hand clap. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll just play. Hello, my name is Deborah Johnson, Chapel, class of 82. I come through Cross County High School and I had four to come behind me, well, four children to graduate. I am all for the no hoodies. I, I, I can't deal with it. But the thing of it is, we as parents, like uh, Kamar said, we have to back up our teachers. Is there, I mean, these, some of these kids, and I've dealt with the public. I was a foster parent for 16 years. I know how those kids can push a button. And it's, it's different when you have them 24-7 and you have them a certain length of time. But the thing of it is, we have to be all on one accord. We have to be in order to make this work. No attitudes with the parents, no attitudes with the, the, the uh, staff. We have to work together. You can't see Johnny over there. Pull your hoodie out. Pull it out. You know you ain't supposed to have it on. What about, hey, look, man, you don't need that on. You know the rule. Let's get it off. It's the difference between being a smarty and being firm. 
I'm a firm believer of that. Anything, any way I can help, if I have to monitor the house, I will. I'll be at the schools anyway. I'm always here, and I will try to address some parents if I can, but I'm here to help. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. I'm kind of loud, so. The main thing that I would like to see this year, consistency among all schools. In the past, uh, by the way, for y'all that don't know me, I own custom tees. So we see a lot of these parents and we try to direct them what to buy for their kids. Well, you've got one school doing one thing, one school not allowing it. The rules need to be the same across the board. Um, I do have a couple of questions so that I am steering my parents right this year. Spirit shirts, we need to know a color. If they're going to be school approved colors, that needs to be in the rules. Because if not, you're going to have people buying neon pink coarse can of tiger shirts. So in the past, that has been allowed on Spirit Day on Friday, pink out games, whatever. But then they wear it the rest of the year. If y'all are going to allow that, allow it on Fridays, whatever make it consistent so that I'm not telling parents, yes, you can buy a neon pink coarse can of tiger shirt and they get to school on Monday and you can't wear that. That's the main thing I would like to see. And I'm all for doing away with hoodies. Our worst part is parents haven't been parents for a while now. COVID has kind of taken over everybody's life. We've all gone somewhere else in our brains and our parents aren't get, our kids aren't getting the attention they need at home. They're acting out at school. Teachers are having to parent them. You know what? They're kids. They need rules. Make sure they abide by them. Staff needs to do the same thing. The high school last year, and I, I'm not even going to get into that. I've got one at the high school. Uh, the dress code, it was enforced for a couple of weeks and then out the door. My kid wore a heavy metal shirt every day to school with a hoodie on over it. So, I mean, there needs to be rules, but they need to be followed. If you're going to make a rule, follow it. If not, throw the rules out the window because nobody's abiding by them anyway. So we need, we need that hardness there, whether they put one person in charge of discipline for dress codes or whatever. You've got to have a tough person there that's not going to take anything off these kids because they're going to try and push and push all they can. So um, whatever the rules are, I don't care, just as long as I've got everybody on the same page because it's, it's all over the board with what schools allow and what and what schools not. And it, consistency would be great. It would, it would be easier for me to direct parents because I'm having to tell some parents, no, your school doesn't allow this, but the rest of the schools do. That includes C's on shirts. So I, I mean, detailed rules would be great because anybody's going to push buttons to try and get pat well the rules don't say that so make it crystal clear spill it out so that there is no question as to what the rules are especially high school kids spell it out because when they say well the rules yes they do they say it right here so thanks guys and to let you know we'll we'll convene and we'll get that taken care of but I do want to address something that, that Misty just said. Um, I, I may be in the minority here, but I thought, I think it's fine if it's a solid color t-shirt underneath the sweatshirt. I don't know, I know that, that was discussed last meeting and people said it had to have something tigers on it, but I, I don't know what it matters if they have a sweatshirt on anyway and you aren't going to see it. It'd be no different than wearing a collared shirt that was a solid color. So why couldn't we do solid t-shirts in the school colors? Yeah. And you're keeping your sweatshirt on, you're still abiding by the rules. Correct. That was my, yeah, that was, my thought was you don't have to go out and buy a spirit shirt. You could buy a white t -shirt, plain t-shirt or a blue plain t-shirt. I mean, I just don't know. I'm, I think that, that, that yes, we're addressing safety, but we're also relaxing this. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I see this as a real give and take yeah. and, a, and a good thing here. So I, I just think that if we had a solid colored t-shirt, I don't know why we're arguing about a solid colored t-shirt if it's underneath the sweatshirt anyway. Or even if the sweatshirt's not on, it would still be 
within the solid color that we would allow a polo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think you're, I think you're right. I mean, because you know, if the sweatshirt never comes off, you're ne it doesn't matter what the color of the t-shirt is underneath. I mean, as long as it's school approved, as far as that's concerned. And a teacher would have to answer this, but to me, I'm assuming if you've got a well-behaved child, you're not going to say, "Please pull up that gray sweatshirt and make me see that there's no something on the t-shirt," right? With the, with the hoodies last year, they did not do that at the hospital. They did not check what was under the hoodies. Yeah. Zip up said the first of the year they did check. Okay. They, they did. pull their zipper down and mm -hmm. sure that they had a collar on, but, but hoodies they did not. Okay. So y'all probably wouldn't waste your time on something like that, right? So would that be okay? I mean, does anybody have any objection to the just... Thing, the only thing to keep in mind as far as wearing a solid colored shirt without the hood, Kids are gonna wear white undershirts. Um, so I mean, that's just kind of more self opinion on them wearing undershirts. If they're keeping their sweatshirt on, you're gonna well, keep the sweatshirts on, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like we're saying. But if y'all are talking about letting them wear solid blue t shirts with no tigers mm -hmm. on them, or solid yeah. gold t shirts, or solid white t shirts, they're gonna wear undershirts. I think, it, I think it's gotta be a spirit shirt if they take the sweatshirt off. But if they don't take the sweatshirt off. So what I was saying is I think if you say spirit shirt on underneath, they can take the sweatshirt off. Why else would we write the spirit shirt rules? So a spirit shirt, if you want to take that sweatshirt off, you better have a spirit shirt underneath. Other than that, you can wear what you want to wear underneath. underneath but that sweatshirt has to, has to remain yeah. on okay. if it's plain. All, all, if it's plain. I mean, that's the concession we're giving. I mean, I think yeah. it's a pretty, pretty nice concession. Because my kid, I'll be honest, hated, you know, loves the hoodie. When I told him he could wear a spirit T-shirt, he went, "Oh, best day ever." So, I just have one more thing. Um, it's definitely at the high school. When I subbed there, I saw one AP will tell one set of group of girls, "You can't wear tights. You need to call your parents." Then the mm -hmm. next AP would know that other parent and be like, no, you can't wear, you can wear those, go on. Tights mm -hmm. should not be able to wear at the high school at all. I'm so sorry, girls are not. Pants? Yes, girls are yeah, not leggings. built yeah, like, like how I was. Leggings, yeah. Leggings. Like I was when I was growing up. It's something in the water and the food. I don't think they, they are. Really leggings. Yes, and you, some of the tights are see-through mm -hmm. and when you send them down there to the AP, they come right back up with a just a uh, hoodie wrapped around them. I just feel like tights, juggins, leggings, whatever should not be allowed. That is actually not in the dress code. Yeah, no, so not. we need we need to enforce and to to, to put it in and enforce yeah. the leggings. No leggings. Do y'all agree? Yes. No leggings. Okay. We'll add so that would be number six onto the changes. And number seven will be um, solid colored or within the CISD approved solid colored t shirts allowed under sweatshirts. Is that how y'all want it? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Say it again. CISD approved solid colored t-shirts would be allowed under sweatshirts or sweaters. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because without the sweatshirt, it has to be spirit shirt. I think maybe just stating if your undershirt is out of dress code, the sweatshirt has to stay on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Say that one more time. If, exactly. Yeah. Say it again. If the, if the shirt under the sweatshirt is out of dress code, the sweatshirt must remain on at all times. Yeah. Veronica, could you get that? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to read these again where we stand, or what do you want to do? Yeah. And, and just, just to let everyone know, like, in my opinion, we've 
we've done a lot of work on this, so I expect it to be followed. And I'm going to watch over it. And I know the board members here, we're going to watch over this. It's very important to us. It's important for the safety of our students. And to me, Chief Stevens is all the argument I needed to hear, to be honest. I mean, I, everybody else was great. But when he has a problem identifying a student with a weapon, that's it. My, my mind was made up. So I do appreciate that. I, you know, and it's vulnerability. I mean, it's, I mean, we have those things happen. And uh, unfortunately, it's a life and times we live in. And uh, we, there's, no, there's no going back. So I do appreciate all the work that this board and the, the cabinet and all the members have done a tremendous amount of work on this. So I appreciate all the hard work. I, I do just want to say one thing that, um, you know, we've heard a, a lot this week, as we always do, but, um, you know, in talking with friends um, across the country, CISD is not the only one experiencing these problems. These problems are across the globe, especially in the United States. So I think that, um, you know, this happens in bigger schools and it happens in smaller schools and we're delusional if we don't think that it happens everywhere. Um, but I, I do want to say that I, I think that Megan's point was so well taken that when you have 1,700 kids to police, it's very different than policing 100, which is also harder at 3,600 kids. So I can see why these um, districts are going through this, but I think that if we all come together and do this the right way, I think we'll be successful and get back to where we need to go. So do you want a motion with these changes? I'd be happy to make a motion. I'd like for you to read to, them first. To read it okay. first, if you don't mind, and then we, we, then you can make the motion after that. Okay. You'd like. like to make seven, no, seven modifications to the current Corsican ISD standardized dress with allowing our communications department to write them in the correct um, way as to where there is no discussion as to um, questionable um, items on the dress code. So number one would be to eliminate hoodies num completely. Number two, um, spirit shirts, solid color t-shirts, or collared shirts will be allowed. Um, shirts do not have to, so do you want the solid taken out and put it down on the other part? Yes. Okay. So spirit short shirts or collared shirts in the CISD approved colors are allowed daily. Number three, shirts do not have to be tucked in. Number four, eliminate the belt section in the entire dress code. Belts are not required. Number five, eliminate the sock section within the standardized dress code. Socks do not matter. Number six, add into the section of bottoms, no leggings, yoga pants, tights, whatever wording we need to use that may be worn. That, that I guess that would be a fabric we would need to put a fabric in there, Veronica, spandex. you think? A spandex, you know, whatever fabric we need to put in that as well. And number seven, um, it, however, we need to word this one that um, if a solid colored shirt, t-shirt is worn underneath the sweatshirt, you cannot remove your sweatshirt during the day. How do or any an, appro an approved shirt, yeah. t-shirt is, wor is worn under yeah. the sweatshirt. It's okay. an approved shirt okay. underneath the sweatshirt must be worn. Okay. Number one, can y'all put that? Y'all are listed in hoodies. A hoodie is a pullover with a yep. hood. And y'all yep. sure can. Put no hoods, period. Yep. Because jackets have hoods. You make it cold and plain mm -hmm. today. And no I, hoods, period. I think we also need to put in here that sweatshirts, crew neck, v neck, zip up are all fine, right. just no hoods. Yeah. If your jacket has a hood, if it can be rolled up, yeah, how, and, and can we put that 
can we empower the group that's going to do the standard protocol for discipline of these actions? Maybe make a um, maybe make a concession for jackets with little kids. Maybe if it's cold and they come in with a hoodie, it has to be immediately taken off, put in their backpack or their locker or whatever. Can we can we let the committee discuss that? the committee and I think let the let the administrators discuss yeah. that with the little kids I think it's a little different but okay. that's it okay so did you make the motion yes so that moved second. that was second second all right I have a motion and a second here we go we're gonna allow the communications department to to write this more eloquently but we're gonna have no hoodies we're gonna eliminate hoodies and hoods in our schools number two Spirit shirts are okay for daily wear. You eliminate the need for collared shirts. Collared shirts are still allowed, but spirit shirts are okay. You don't have to tuck in your shirt. That's number three. Number four, we're eliminating the belt requirement. Number five, we're eliminating the sock section. Number, number six, no leggings, yogas, tights, spandex material for bottoms. And number seven, if your undershirt is not a school approved shirt, your sweatshirt cannot come off. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it, this motion passes. And I, ladies and gentlemen. Can I make another motion? That, sure. That you as president create or use your security committee to create a, a um, committee for discussion of standard protocol for discipline and consistency within all of the schools to where discipline for the action is very clear um, and that it is consistent over all campuses um, throughout the year. And that every child be hand. And, and Mr. President, also, can we get with uh, maybe Veronica, their department, maybe some type of phone number where, where they can call into that number where, like, each school is not giving their, like, interpretation of what we just discussed. That way everybody gets, gets, gets the same information from the same person because it, it's all filtered together, you know, it's all together. So that way it eliminate. Be getting calls at the high school, people calling the middle school, people calling the intermediate school. If we just have one number, one person can filter every all the questions that's going to be asked because it's, they're going to get phone calls. And I think on all of our information, um, we need to release the um, closed closet that Compassion Corsicana has, as well as the CISD closed closet, so that everyone knows that there are places they can go for help um, if need be and getting. Um, the standardized dress. But I, I would empower you, Seth, to um, create that committee um, along with Dr. Frost and the um, administrators and whoever you have on your, your security committee to create that standard protocol for all schools. Yeah, we're going to set up a committee to discuss discipline follow-up and consistency with this new policy. We will do that. Does anyone else have anything? Right. Well, I hereby declare this meeting adjourned.